Hey guys, welcome to my channel, The Analyst. Today, we will speak about support vector machines. Support vector machines are a machine learning algorithm, all right? a supervised machine learning algorithm. Now, a supervised machine learning algorithm takes a known set of input data and a known set of responses and then forms a model to generate reasonable predictions for the response to new data. Okay. Now, Take this plot for example as we can see there are two sets of data over here all right one is represented by blue points and one is represented by red points these are plotted in two-dimensional and are easily separable separable all right uh, a linear kernel can be used in this case to separate this data but what happens if we have data like this now the blue points and the red points cannot be separated linearly in two dimensional so what svm uses is the kernel trick all right it projects this two dimensional data into three dimensional in this case and then it is easily separable by a plane a point to note over here is that while we are separating the data we have to ensure that the margin is as wide as possible because we are training this model on a training data set and then testing it against other data points if this margin is small then there may be a possibility that when you use the same model on a test data set we may get wrong predictions okay so we don't want to overfit the data on the training set and then afterwards get bad results on the testing set okay now let's move to our studio to basically understand this practically here I will make use of Pac-Man to install to load all my packages okay so once I install Pac-Man then I'll load kern lab now kern lab is where exactly we are going to make use of KSVM okay to basically practically run SVMs on our so the first if you want a detailed documentation, what we can do is basically type in KSVM over here and you'll get an entire documentation down over here. We can read what all hyperparameters are present and basically get an elaborated uh, description of what they are. Okay, so let's go step by step. I install Pacman to basically load my packages. Kernlab is important over here wherein we'll be using KSVM to test out SVM on R. Let's leave the other deployer KKNN and CA tools out for now. We'll be reading in the credit card data. Okay, so basically we'll be running SVM over our credit card data. A little bit more information about credit card approval data set is present over here. I will be pasting the link in the description below. Now, once we read in data, we'll be able to see that data over here, okay, which is in the environment. And as you can see, there are A1, A2, A3, A8, there are many factors and one label. One means that your credit is approved and zero means that it's not approved. Now what basically we are going to do over here is first we are going to R1 which is our label. Alright, R1. We're going to set it as a factor. So ones and zeros. Then we're going to take our entire data set and split it in the ratio of zero 75% to 25%. Now 75% is where we will create our training data set and 25% is where we will have a testing data set. Now our training data set will make use of the labels to form a model that would be able to predict points in the test data set without making use of the label. Okay. So these three lines of code basically not these three, these two lines of code will be used 
to split your data. And as you can see, I've saved it as data train and data test. Now, what I'll be doing over here is that I'll be varying cost. Now, lower the cost, the margin may be wider. Okay, so a point to understand over here is that your model will be trained against your training data set. That means you'll have an SVM classifier and you'll also have a margin that is present. Varying the cost will either increase or decrease the margin. When the margin is wider, it means that more points in the training data set may get misclassified. And if it's shorter, that means more accurately the training data set will be classified. But the point over here is not to get a really high accuracy on the training data set, but instead get a good accuracy on the test data. Okay, so we don't want a cost that's really high and that will fit the training data. Okay, and then afterwards cause lower accuracy in the test data set. So we don't know as of now what cost would be favorable. So I'm just creating a list over here wherein the cost would vary from 10 raised to minus 5 to 10 raised to 5. Okay. Then what I do is that I create a loop to basically vary this cost. As you can see, I use KSVM from the Kern Lab package. I feed in the training data set. Okay. And since I said this is a supervised learning algorithm, I also feed in the labels for the training data set. Then we use CSV and the kernel lab is vanilla dot, which is a linear kernel. So we're first going to have a look at a linear kernel. C is your cost, which I'll be varying. And we need to scale our data because when we go back to the data, we can see that their ranges vary a lot. Okay. So when your ranges vary a lot, like this is 30.3, this is 4 point something, a lot of weight could be given to the attribute with higher values. So what we need to do is that we need to scale it. So hence we put the scale as true. Now, basically what we are doing is trying to get a linear pane. All right. Now, so for that, we will require an equation. So after you train your model, you'll get those equations from A1 to AM. Okay. Let me go back a little. Okay. This is the equation that we're aiming for. The equation of the plane that will be used to separate two categorically different points on a plot. Okay. So as you can see this A1, A3, A8. So that is basically A1, A2, A3, A8, A9, A10, right up to A15. Should be present over here. And then you will have your A0, which is your constant, which is the basic Y equal to MX plus C, your basic equation of a line. And since we are having a plane, like this is in multi-dimension, this is your equation over here. So then you get A linear. You didn't call sums with model linear at the rate matrix and you pick up the first one. Then you can get A0. And then now when you have a model, okay, then we'll check it. Check to see whether the model is able to predict against your test data. Okay. Like as you can see over here, we're only using the attributes. We're not using the labels of your test data set because you want to see how well it's actually going to predict. Okay. So use the predict function over here and you'll basically get a prediction of each of those data points. Okay. Once you get the prediction, then I want to see how accurate the prediction is. Okay. So for example, consider that this first row is your test data set. So A1 to A15 is what I will feed in to the model and then the model will predict that it's a zero. Okay. But over here you can see that it's a one. So that means the prediction is wrong. All right. If it predicts a one. That means the prediction is correct or not. So this way for all the points in the test data, we will get their predictions and then afterwards see 
the ratio to which the predictions are actually correct okay so if you see your training data sets contain 490 observations which is 75 percent and your test data contains 164 observations which is 25 percent so once you click on that you have your predictions then afterwards you can view basically for each cost parameter for each cost value that you have what is your prediction percent okay like for 10 raised to minus 5 we have a 54 percent accuracy all right for minus 4 we have 10 or 54 percent again then we have an 86 percent and 85 percent all right so as we are varying the cost para hyperparameter we get various accuracies for our predictions now the best one that we get over here is 0 0.001 okay which provides an accuracy of 86 percent this is using the linear kernel and as you can see the cost parameter is also low now what the good thing about a low cost parameter like i said earlier is that a low cost parameter will give you a soft classifier okay a soft classifier will have a wide margin a wide margin means that there may be misclassifications in your training data however it will not overfit your training data so that means when you try the same model out on your test data it will classify better okay now after we come to know exactly what the cost parameter is then we basically use the same cost parameter over here so as you can see we use c is equal to cost list switch prediction so basically we use 0.001 over here wherein we are using the max prediction factor over here all right we are using the cost wherein we get the best prediction and scaled is true i already explained why we are using kernel as one la dot because it's a linear kernel and then you get the parameters over here for a1 a2 a3 so basically we get the coefficients against each of these attributes that will basically be used to form the equation of the plane a0 is the constant over here and hence we get the same now the same thing we will do for using a non-linear kernel okay and see which is best again we're using pacman to basically load kernel app header is true we are just we're reading the table you're factorizing it we are splitting the data into train and test we will vary the cost parameter again from 10 raised to minus 5 to 10 raised to 5 we are applying a loop over here and varying the cost okay but this time the kernel is rbf dot which is a non-linear kernel a gaussian kernel again the steps are all the same and then we're basically saving it in a matrix to basically understand the predictions We do a do dot call to basically you form a proper table to see against which C values what the predictions are. And as you can see over here, the best prediction is provided by 0 0.1. In case of the linear kernel, it was 0 0.001. And here the cost hy hyperparameter has a value of 0 0.1 and still doesn't provide as good a prediction it's very close but a better prediction is provided by the linear kernel all right again once we get an op the optimal value for the cost parameter we will use that over here we are picking up the cost hyperparameter value that has the best prediction and then afterwards we get the value of the equation for for the I'm sorry I seem to be facing some disturbance so where was I okay so yeah you get the equation of the hyperplane that will separate your points all right 
uh, as you can see from just give me a moment please 